Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya All together please Om Ajnana Timarandas Yaganandana Salakaya Chakshuron Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Sabitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadarti Swapadandikam Pandeham Sri Guru Sri Yukta Padakamalam Sri Gurun Vaishnavamsha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragana Thambitam Tham Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Prijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padang Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitamsha He Krishna Karna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagarpate Gopesha <coughs> Nostute Tapcha Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavanishwari Prishabana Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Pancha Kalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Paridanam Pavnebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasudhi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So reading from Srimad Bhagavatam Translation and Commentary His Divine Grace Srila Esi Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Prabhupada so, today we're starting 10th chapter, and uh, what is it entitled? 7th canto, entitled, Prahlad, the best among exalted devotees. So please repeat, Sri Narada Avacha, Bhakti Yogasya, Tat Sarvam, Antara Yatar Bhaka Yata Ya Bhaka Sorry Antara Yata Ya Bhaka Difficult one Manyamano Rishikesham Smayamana Avacha Shri Narada Avacha Bhakti Yogasya Tat Sarvam Antara Yata Yabaka Manyamano Rishikesham Smayamana Uvacha Sri Narada Avacha Bhakti Yogasya Tat Sarvam Antara Yata Yabaka Mayan Mano Rishikesham Smayamana Uvacha Sri Narada Avacha Bhakti Yoga Shitat Sarvam Antara Yata Yabaka Manyamano Rishikesham Smayamana Uvacha So please repeat word for word Sri Narada Vacha Narada Muni said Bhakti Yoga Sya of the principles of devotional service. That these blessings or benedictions offered by Lord Nishringadev. 
Sarvam, each and every one of them. Antarya Yataya, because of being impediments for the path of Bhakti Yoga. Abakaha Prahlad Maharaj, although only a boy. Manyamanaha, considering Rishikesham unto Lord Nishringadev. Smayamanaha, smiling. Uvacha, said, in the past. Oh, sorry, ha, in the past. Translation, Srila Prabhupada. The Saint Narada Muni continued. Although Prahlad Maharaj was only a boy, when he heard the benedictions offered by Lord Nrsingadev, he considered them impediments on the path of devotional service. Thus he smiled very mildly and spoke as follows. Please repeat. The, sa the Saint Narada Muni continued. Although Prahlad Maharaj was only a boy, when he heard the benedictions offered by Lord Nishringadev, he considered them impediments on the path of devotional service. Thus he smiled very mildly and spoke as follows. Purport Srila Prabhupada. Material achievements are not the ultimate goal of devotional service. The ultimate goal of devotional service is... Yes, that's exactly what... Oh, you're reading the book. <laughs> yes. The ultimate goal of devotional service is love of Godhead. Everybody knows that, right? Therefore, although Prahlad Maharaj, Dhruva Maharaj, Ambarish Maharaj, Yudhisthira Maharaj, and many devotee kings were materially very opulent, they accepted their material opulence in the service of the Lord, not for their personal sense gratification. Of course, possessing material opulence is always fearful, because under the influence of material opulence, one may be misdirected from devotional service. Nonetheless, a pure devotee, anyabilasita sunyam, is never misdirected by material opulence. On the contrary, whatever he possesses, he engages 100% in the service of the Lord. When one is allured by material possessions, they are considered to be given by maya. But when one uses material possessions fully for service, they are considered God's gifts or facilities offered by Krishna for enhancing one's devotional service. So, Makam Karoji Vacha Alam Pangam Lai Tegirim Yad Kripa Kartamaham Vande Shri Guru Dinatarinam Shri Narada Avacha Bhakti Yoga Shyatat Sarvam Antaya Yatayar Bakaha Manyamano Rishikesham Smayamana Uvachaha. The Saint Narada Muni continued, Although Prahlad Maharaj was only a boy, when he heard the benedictions offered by Lord Nishingadev, he considered them impediments on the path of devotional service. Thus, he smiled very mildly and spoke as follows. Yes. So, uh, early, earlier on, uh, we just saw a verse there. Krishna says something very interesting, actually. Uh, Lord Nishringadev, of course, that's Krishna. He explains, if I can find it, that it is... Ah, oh, yes. Verse 52. It is my pastime to fulfill the desires of all living beings, and therefore you may ask from me any benediction 
that you desire to be fulfilled. So very interesting. Huh? Krishna's pastime is to fulfill the desires of everyone. So we know that verse, right, from the Upanishads. Nicho nichanam chetanas chetananam eko yo dadati kaman. Yes. Out of all eternals, there's one eternal, supreme eternal. Uh, out of all conscious beings, there's one supremely conscious being, Krishna. We're conscious of this body, but just consider that Krishna is conscious of everybody and everything. It's quite remarkable. Um, and that supreme eternal and supremely conscious being who knows the heart of everyone and knows their desires, he is the one that fulfills their karma, their desire. Huh? It's very interesting. So this is pure Vaishnavism. We always focus on Krishna. We don't say the demigods are giving us or this one is that. No, Krishna. Huh? Krishna is giving and fulfilling everyone's desire. He says here that this is his pastime. So he's very happy to do that. And it's very interesting if we consider that, therefore he's also fulfilling the desire of the materialist, karma. That is a material desire. But at the same time, he's sending the Shastra, he's sending the Sadhus, He's sending the Guru manifest uh, to advise us. Don't desire in this direction. Desire, yes, a healthy and natural life. What is that verse? Kamasya nendriya pritir labdho jivata yavata. Life's desires should never be desired, uh, should never be directed to sense gratification. One should desire only a healthy and normal life uh, because human life facilitates inquiry into the absolute truth. So yes, we have desire, but the Shastra, the Sadhus, the Gurus, they are teaching us, fulfill it in a regulated way. Uh, don't be a monkey, as Prabhu says. Don't just do anything. Uh, do it according to the Vedas. So therefore, also there's one verse there. Uh, and then it, you will be in piety. You will come to the mode of goodness. And from that condition, you will be able to understand devotional service. Mode of goodness is like um, this. We haven't had many days. When there's no fog, you can see more clearly. Mode of passion is like a foggy day. And mode of ignorance is like the fog at night. Uh, you can't see anything, you have to go carefully. Some people are going crazy, so on. So, from the mode of goodness you can see, in the clear day, the fog has gone from the mind. So then you can see, ah yes, I should live in this regulated way. But that is not everything. Huh? We should desire self-realization, atato brahmanjignas. So it's a very important point. So Krishna is fulfilling everyone's desire. And Prabhupada many times in many lectures, lectures um, <clears throat> he's explaining the, the thief. He wants to rob the bank. So Krishna in the heart, conscience, right? We have conscience. Of course, psychopath, they don't have conscience. They can do anything. Uh, sociopath, they don't have any guilt feeling. They don't have any feelings at all in the normal emotional, reactional sense. They just are devoid of moral sense, everything that's convenient. So you become like that through very sinful activity and also um, offending spiritual personalities. You lose all intelligence. So it's very important then that we know what should be done and what should not be done because that is in the Gita also pravittim cha nivrittim cha the demoniac they don't know what is to be done and what is not to be done like we see nowadays the demoni the fools and rascals they want to change the uh, tomato so that it lasts longer in the shop 
uh, so they can make more money. Everything to the demon is a way of making money. So much wealth do I have today and I will get more according to my plans. He is my enemy and I have killed him. He is my enemy and I will kill him. That is none so powerful, wonderful. I'm surrounded by aristocratic relatives and friends that admire me and my opulence. Uh, there's none so wonderful as me. I will give in charity and in that way my name will be broadcast. Uh, so this is the demon. Oh, everything is money. Nadanam. When Lord Jesus said Nadanam, he's starting with money. Huh? Because if you have Dunham, then you have Janam. You have followers. Huh? Rich people, I don't have this experience myself, they're always surrounded <laughs> by uh, hangers on, right? And they always become paranoid. Everyone wants me for their, my money. And why is that? Because it's true. <laughs> Generally, people follow rich people to get something. Oh, he's a billionaire. Maybe he'll be in a good mood and give me a million. What's that? You know, if you've got a billion, you know. So they think like this. Nadanam janam sundarim. And then sundarim, after that, you can have a sensual life and wine, women, and song. And after that, you go to hell. <laughs> so Prahlad Maharaj, in today's verse, if you remember, he's saying, uh, I'm not interested in the, he's smiling gently and he said, I'm not really interested in these material, any material benedictions, my Lord. Um, but he does say later on, because I was reading it last night, and he says, but if there's one benediction I will have, there's another one coming later, uh, and that is that there's no material desires in the core of my heart because I'm very fearful of this material energy. Huh? So Krishna in the conscience, in the heart, Chaitu Guru, the Shastra, the Sadhus, the example of the Acharyas, they're all guiding us how to walk within the material energy. Huh? Because this material energy works on action and reaction, the laws of karma. Right? They're subdivided into f five, actually. Um, karma itself, karma means in this context, it means your natural propensities, your guna and karma. According to your natural material conditioning, you will tend to this kind of activity. So karma means to do your work. So karma yoga means to do your work within Varnashram as an offering. Jai. Sri Sri Gorni Thai Krishna Balaram Radha Sham Sunda Dalit Vishaka Gomata Tulsi Maharani Shalgram Maharaj Giri Govadan Sadhu Sangha Ki So, what was I saying? So we've got to stop being sinful. <laughs> what was the point there? Huh? Yes, ah, oh, that's right, the divisions of karma, excuse me. It, I'll blame it on the fog, it's entered. <laughs> so, yeah, so there's karma and then there is a karma. Prabhupada uses this word in two ways. Um, Bhaktivinoda, a karma means to not perform your material duties. That also has a karmic effect. You're not doing, you have children, you're not looking after them. That is a karma. You have a duty. Then v karma, but also a karma is you don't have to do your varnashram material duties if you're immersed in love of God and a high level of bhajan. Then you don't have any responsibility to your material karmas. So then there is v karma. So there's karma, a karma. V karma means to perform activities against uh, your natural proclivities. Like Krishna says in the Gita, better to do your own duty than to do somebody else's duty perfectly. Because to follow somebody else's path is dangerous, Krishna says. 
So it's dangerous to do things that you're not properly in tune with doing, <coughs> trying to do somebody else's work. Uh, so that brings a bad reaction. So then there is um, Ugra karma. Uh, that is a progression of V karma, but Ugra karma means very sinful things, like uh, polluting the oceans with an oil rig, uh, polluting the river, polluting the air, uh, exploding nuclear bombs. The fools and rascals, I, I found out one time, they've, since the time we've heard of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, of course, but they have exploded over 2,000 nuclear bombs since then. Uh, in the newspapers they say, oh, it was terrible how they exploded those bombs. But they've exploded 2,000 inside the earth, in the atmosphere, even in the ocean. So this is Ugra Karma of the nth degree. And then Ugra Karma means that. Genetic manipulation of a tomato or an apple. For thousands of years we've been very happy with our organic tomatoes, but they're becoming a rarity. And everybody knows they're cancer causing. Right? The documentaries, you just can download them from the internet, half a dozen. But it makes money. So I'll manipulate the advertising and the politicians to push it all through. So this is Ugra Karma. Destroying the environment, uh, polluting the people's minds, all these grossly th sinful things in Kali Yuga. So Krishna is uh, telling us, huh? You have material opulence, and this is what Prahlad Maharaj says there. He says, I don't want material benedictions because it's very dangerous. I'm fearful of this material energy. Prabhupada once said that actually. He said, my disciples, um, they're fearless, but they should be fearful of the maya. <laughs> he was, I'm paraphrasing. He said they, because we were all so blissful, we were failing so empowered, we didn't worry about anything. So Prabhupada <laughs> says, no, no, you should be a little careful in this world. Uh, because the material energy is there to grab you. Of course, this is Krishna's arrangement, but the material energy is to break the enjoying spirit. This is the problem. Just like we read that at the end of the purport, Prabhupada said, if you get material opulences and you use them in Krishna's service, then they're the gifts of the Lord. Huh? So that's praying, that's like gold. But if you use material opulence for your own enjoyment, that's like steel or metal or rusty. That's calm. So then they become a distraction. But Prahlad Maharaj is instructing us, be very careful. Because the tendency is that when you have dhanam janam sundarim, when you have material opulence, you will start to become an enjoyer, right? You'll start to think, oh, I can control and I can enjoy. This is what people, ishivasya uh, idam sarvam, we do this verse. Everything is controlled and owned by the Lord. And he has a right to do that because janmadi asyata, he's the source. Everything has come. He's the creator. So he uh, has a right to control and use the material and spiritual energy as he sees fit. But we're not the source. So we don't have the right to appoint ourselves in our illusory conceptions of being the supreme controller of my wife, my country, my opulence. Because then, why do we want to control in this material mentality? The next step we will be, we'll try and enjoy. And then, Ugra Karma, Vikarma, Akarma, and it's an old story. Uh, people get big money and then they go to hell in this life and probably the next one. So we don't say, oh, 
Give up sex life, give up money, give up followers, give up all these material facilities. We don't say that. We say use them in the service of the Lord. Huh? Then they're gifts. Then it's a very wonderful thing. But use them in a sensual way for your own illusory material happiness. Krishna is in the heart telling us, giving, giving that thief, he wants to steal, rob the bank. Prabhupada explains uh, that Krishna in the heart will, right, things are done at night, uh, generally robbing banks. Of course, not always. But why? Because the people know it's bad. Huh? Criminals come out at night. The Rakshasas come out at evening time and they maraud. Uh, where's some sinful activity to encourage? So, this is a, a, a dangerous world. Huh? Is it a dang you just have to drive in India and you know it's a dangerous world. <laughs> We won't go down that road. <laughs> anyway, so the Acharyas and the uh, says, use your material opulence. You want sensuality? Get married. Huh? And then have an honest life with your wife. Love your children. You'll feel fulfilled. And uh, it's even stated in the Bhagavatam that a man should look on the body of his wife as a boat by which he can cross the material energy. Because this is karma. This is regulated activity. Have a wife, have children, bring them up in Krishna consciousness and go back to Godhead. Huh? It's very important that we understand that Krishna he is fulfilling the desire, yes. And Prabhupada says, after being in the heart, Krishna then gives the thief intelligence. I want to rob the bank. Uh, I want to steal the tax money. I want to do this. I want to do that. I'm feeling bad, but then I insist, then Krishna, okay, do it in this way, do it in this way. But then the bank manager doesn't want to be robbed. Prabhupada tells a story like this. And he's praying to God, please may my bank not be thieved. And the, a thief is outside the door saying, how can I, dear God, please give me intelligence how to rob this bank. So what a problem Krishna has. <laughs> so, <laughs> Prabhupada tells a story just like that. He doesn't say how Krishna works it out. Sometimes the thief gets thought. And anyway, um, so Prahlad Maharaj, and also, I also read in one of the purports last night, Prabhupada says that um, if one still has the mood of thinking this material world is a wonderful place, then it's very hard to apply yourself to spiritual life. Uh, uh, therefore, at the beginning of the Bhagavatam, what's it said? That Krishna is Akinchana Niskinchana. He's the property of the Akinchana and Niskinchana. The person who has no material aspirations and who has no material possessions. So you might say, that's a bit strange. You must have a doti at least. Well, not in India actually. But it means that he doesn't call anything his own. So that's the solution in the Ishupanishad. Ishavasha idam sarvam yatkinchat jagajam jagat tena taktena bunjita magrida kashaswit hanam. So everything is controlled and owned by the Supreme Lord. He's the source of it. Huh? Therefore, one should not only accept what is necessary, what comes naturally, and one should not desire other people's property, knowing well to whom it belongs. That means you know that it belongs to Krishna. Now if this has come for me, come to me, that's Krishna's arrangement. 
He's given me this situation, he's given me this body, he's given me this uh, um, ability, this and that. I take it as Krishna's mercy and then I use it in his service. And I become fulfilled and spiritually realized with this mentality. So that's the advice of the Acharyas. And then, what does Krishna say in this point? Tesham satata yuktanam bhajitam priti purvakam didami buddhi yogam tam yenamam upiyantite. And then he, he, he says the same thing, evan tesham evan nukam patham about jnana bish that I dwelling in their hearts display the darkness born of ignorance with the lamp of knowledge. That's the first stage of Krishna consciousness. Um, Vidya vidu jivanam, we chant every morning. That by bhakti, you become realized in knowledge of Krishna and realize his presence. Then you develop bhava and prem, anandam buddhivardhanam. So this will lead you in the right direction, this mentality. So, while we are materially conditioned, Krishna doesn't like to give excessive material opulence to his devotee. Because, uh, if I won the, you know, say I, I don't know if there's a lottery in India, do they have lotteries? Anyway, say you won the lottery, then you might think, oh, it's a bit chilly this morning. I'm going down south. I'm not going to stay in Brindavan and chant my rounds and do my service here. We, we get we, the mentality. We lose the service attitude and we want to exploit that wealth and material benediction for our own sense enjoyment. And then we lose the devotional mood and then we can't remember Krishna. So this is what is the most fearful thing in the material world, that the material energy and the material body is tuned to material enjoyment. So therefore, we have to engage it in a higher sense. Uh, we have to engage it in spiritual activity in a regulated manner for a material purpose. Therefore, Lord Rishabdev, he finishes his teaching by saying, Pita Niyasat, Guru Niyasat, Raja Niyasat. Don't become a king. Don't become a, a, a father. Don't become a guru. If you cannot liberate your dependence from birth and death. So, that is the purpose. Uh, because it is fearful. We are in the cycle of birth and death. Uh, birth, death, old age and disease. Right? None of them very nice. And then we're driven, what? To eat, sleep, mate and defend. They're driven. I remember one lecture by Prabhupada. It was very striking. He says, yes, in the spiritual world, there's eating, there's taking rest. There is uh, so many things. But there's no necessity. That means that in this material world, people are anxiety. I must get food or I'll starve to death. But in the spiritual world, people are enjoying uh, foodstuffs, but there is no necessity, there's no driven need. People are taking rest, but they're not driven by tamagun to sleep. They're taking rest, and it's another pastime. It's another variation in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, in the ocean of devotional mellows, in the Leela Shakti. So, um, with this vision, with the vision of the spiritual world, where our real nature is revealed, uh, if we get this conception, and we should understand, what is our real nature? Satchitananda Vigraha, Krishna, he said, uh, Lord Brahma says, Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchidana. So in this material world, we're in the asat condition. We have this temporary material body. We're born in this country, we're born in that country. We're born as a dog, we're born in this way, that way. Everything is temporary, asat. In the spiritual world, we're in the eternal atmosphere. Where time is 
noticeable, it's in the end of the Brahma Samhita, by its absence. So that's remarkable, is it not? That is, people think eternal time means a long time, because we think in terms of past, present and future. But eternal time means existence without the conceptions of past, present and future. That is the material time. But we're in the spiritual world, but there's no sense of past, present. There's a progression of Leela, but there is no conception of past, present and future. So, you may think, what does that mean? And I agree. But these are the points for our contemplation. It is by contemplating these subtle points presented by Guru and Shastra and Acharya that we realize the spiritual world. Huh? So we can contemplate. This is what the great sages do. What is time without the time factor? And they contemplate this. And by grace of Krishna, Jnana Dipena Bhashvita, they get realization. And that realization is the entrance to the spiritual world. So we're in the asat condition, covered by material time. So, achit, the fog of illusion, right? Our consciousness is not clear. In the spiritual world, everyone is f situated in the chit shakti. That means they realize everything. They're always in a position of enlightenment and understanding. Here in the material world, everyone's in anxiety. They're always misinterpreting the events of other people and this and that. And there's conflict based on that. Achit. And then Niranand. Huh? Dukalaya Masashvitam. Because we're in this cycle of birth and death, we're not getting any ananda. We take a little uh, titillation, ephemeral titillation of the senses as happiness. Oh, I've got good food, I'm happy. Oh, I'm having sex, I'm happy. Oh, I've got money, I'm happy. Tomorrow it's gone, next moment it's gone, next five minutes it's gone, and then I'm feeling deflated. Huh? Niranand, unsatisfactory condition. And then Vigraha, that's reference to form and personality. Krishna has form, we have also Swarup. But we don't have our spiritual understanding of our spiritual relationship with Krishna. Our spiritual form. What do we have? We have Aham Mameti. I'm this body and the things attached to this body, these material benedictions, opulences, they're mine to enjoy. We don't think, oh, it's controlled and it's the, Krishna is the source. He's the creator. He's the ultimate controller. He's the ultimate uh, conscious. He's our ultimate friend. We don't think, no, this is for me. And this is mine. Aham Mameti. I'm this body and the things related to this body, they're mine. <coughs> So this is uh, the mayic condition. So we should understand this very carefully and understand the danger of this because it can get worse. Now you have human body, of course you're all devotees, so naha prakrami nashosti, you're guaranteed human life, generally speaking, uh, to continue bhakti, but why Prabhupada says very clearly, finish up your work in this life. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur, at the end of Harinam Jintamani, he says the same thing. He says, he explains how to get rid of Nam Aparad. And then he says, in the last chapter, he says, a Vaishnav can spend hundreds of lifetimes going from one human body to the next. But then in one life, if he becomes determined, I'll follow the principles nicely. I'll chant Hare Krishna. I'll study the Shastra. I'll serve Guru and Krishna according to their pleasure. Then he can go back to Godhead, attain love of God in one life. But if he just takes it as a social event, oh, I'm a Vaishnava, I'm living a nice mode of goodness life, I'll give you human, then he continue in that way for many, many lifetimes. But it's not nice to go inside a womb. 
When the baby's born, he's not dancing, is he? <laughs> he's miserable. <laughs> he has to be slapped just to take a breath. He starts crying. Of course, it's music to the mother. The little bar. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so, this material world uh, is a beggar's banquet. It is not a good place. So, uh, this is, uh, we'll develop this points later when Prahlad Maharaj develops this. But now, because today is very, uh, you can hold any questions on these points. Um, but now, today is the disappearance of Ramchandra Kaviraj and the appearance day of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. So dear Vaishnavs, please become good Vaishnavs. We should all become good Vaishnavs. Uh, and become uh, the dust on the lotus feet of such great personalities as Ramchandra Kaviraj and Gopal Bhatta Goswami. So Ramchandra Kaviraj, you, we sing many times, right? Daya Kora Sri Acharya Prabhu Sri Nivas Ramachandra Sangamage Naratamodas so Narutam Das Thakur, he was a great Vaishnav, of course, and his great companion was Ramchandra, Kaviraj. He got the name Kaviraj by the uh, grace of the Vaishnavs because he was a very good poet. That's one of the qualities of the soul. So, also he should not be um, confused with Ramchandra Puri, right? Ramchandra Puri, I was, um, if I remember, yes, he has a portion of Jatila, the mother-in-law of uh, Radharani, who is the mother of Abhimanyu, yes. So he was finding four with Lord. And there's also a, a Ramchandra, uh, Ramchandra Swami. But this Ramchandra Kaviraj, um, Got a nice book here, um, which just a touch of his pastimes. So Ramchandra, a king amongst poet, was born in the town of Sarangjini on the bank of the Ganges, Ganges, as the son of Sunanda and Chiranjiva Sen, a well-known minister of the king of Gauda, a devotee of Brahmins and Vishnu. Ram Chandra was not in any way different from Naratam Das Thakur. That's the Sangeet Madhava Nataka quoted in the Bhakti Ratnaka 1270. So Chiran Jiva Sain, that's the father, the minister of the pious king, uh, his wife's name was Sunanda. They had two sons. The older was Ram Chandra, the younger Govinda. Ramchandra was a disciple of Srinivasacharya. Right? So Narata mentions Dayakoro Srinivasa. And then his disciple is there. Who took the title Kaviraj. His Siddha name was Karuna Manjari. So we understand his uh, spiritual name. After the death of his father, Ramchandra went to live in Kumar Nagar with his maternal grandfather, Damodar Kaviraj, who was a disciple of Narahari Sakar. Later, he went with his younger brother, Govinda, to live in the village of Tehila Budhari in Murshidhabad district. This place has the distinction of being his Sripat. What is Sripat? Yes, place of bhajan and living and important residence. Ramchandra's wedding. Now this is very interesting here. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur has written that Ramchandra was a lifelong renunciant. Haridas, on the other hand, writes in his Gaudiya Vaishnav Abhidhana that Ramchandra did get married but never lived with his wife. 
Srinivas Acharya saw Ramchandra on the very day of his wedding and said a few words, because we're saying a few words about the paucity of the material energy, so, so did Srinivas, about the temporary nature of material life, thus awakening within him an indifference to the world, such that he never took up the duties of householder life. Now that might sound like a karma, he was married. But a karma means that he was driven, he was drawn, his soul was running into spiritual life, so then you can renounce, renounce material duties. This story has been taken from a book which is not accepted as authoritative by anyone. The following quote is taken from there. So anyway, it's an interesting... Uh, so there's some confusion about his marriage, but his marriage wasn't fulfilled in one sense. Srinivasacharya said, Just look at how much enthusiasm everyone has for this wedding. They are spending so much money, and for what? Right, that's a big thing in India, isn't it? Spread a crow. My God. And for what? Just to purchase illusion and quarrel. You don't realize that Maya has placed a noose around your neck and so you can take a great interest in the auspicious invocatory <coughs> rituals. People celebrate weddings thinking that they are auspicious when they are not and that they have been filled when they have not been fulfilled. So of course, this is questionable because Srinivasacharya, words are put into his mouth here but they're not actually, the thing is, the majority of Lord Chaitanya's uh, followers, they were married. But they had the Vaishnav life, married life, as we're explaining. That uh, they're having children, the wife is considered a boat by which you can cross the material energy. And the wife looks at the husband's body as another boat by which she can cross. Why is that? because then the material desires can be satisfied in a regulated way for a purpose of producing children and then the children can be brought up in Krishna consciousness and the whole thing is then a gift of God. So, the Kaviraj title. Srinivasachari was so overcome with affection for Ramchandra that he gave him the Diksha Mantra. So Srinivasacharya is the Diksha Guru and engaged him as his personal servant. Though Bir Hambir became Srinivasacharya's disciple, Ramchandra acted as his Shiksha Guru. Ramchandra also visited Brindavan where he associated with Jiva Goswami and other Vaishnavas, receiving their blessings. They were very pleased to hear his potency uh, so his poetry, so much so that Jiva Goswami gave him the Kaviraj title. He thus became one of the eight Kaviraj. He was Naratam Das Thakur's favorite companion for preaching activities and spiritual association. Paramananda Bhattacharya, an ocean of love, Jiva Goswami and the other residents of Raja listened to Ram Chandra recite his own poetic composition Excuse me. <coughs> and they joyfully awarded him the Kaviraj title. That's from the Bhakti Ratnaka 12679. Ram Chandra wrote several books, including Smarana Chamkara, Smarana Darpana, Siddha Kandika, and Srinivas Acharya Jivana Charita. And then there's a description how he lived in Brindavan uh, under the shelter of the great Vaishnavas there. So we should quick I did uh, so he's different from Ramchandra Swami, who you may know wrote the um Anangimanjari Samputika. That's a very important book. I've got it here actually. Anangamanjari Samputika. 
You got the famous line in there. Um, Rama Shakti Ananga Manjari. And that leads us to Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Because, where is Gopal Bhatta? There's an interesting thing about um, Gopal Bhatta Goswami because in the Gora Gonadesya Deepika of Vrindavan uh, Dasdakota, uh, it explains here Gora Gonadesya Deepika 184. She who was formerly an Angamanjari has appeared to enrich Mahaprabhu's pastimes as Srila Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Some say that Gopal Bhatta is actually Gunamanjari. So we understand that he had both bhavas. He was in both bhavas. Gopal Bhatta Goswami appeared in 1500 AD, although according to some authorities, 1503. As the son of Venkat Bhatta in the town of Sri Rangam, their residence was in the village not far from Sri Rangam called Belgundi. So he was the son of the Pujaris there. And this was very important. Because at the beginning, when Mahaprabhu and the six Goswamis, they were producing their siddhanta and preaching it to the Vaishnav community, they said, okay, you, you this, but where's your, where's your vidi? You're talking about Prem Bhav and so on, but where's your vidi? How do you worship your deities? So that is um, uh, the reason the um, Hari Bhakti Vilas was put together. Hari Bhakti Vilas has the name of Sanan Goswami, but Gopal Bhatta, he was the son of the Pujaris, uh, a Pujari family in Sri Rangam. There's many families there that are Pujaris. And he knew all the deity worship and Archana Vidhi. And so uh, in consultation with Sanatan Goswami, they produced Hari Bhakti Vilas. And in there is all the Vaishnava Vidhi. Because Ra uh, Lord Chaitanya's movement is Rag Bhakti. He particularly bringing forward Rag. But um, the Vaishnavas at that time, and it's correct, they were very concerned about Vidhi, about the rules and regulations. Nirbanda Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairag Sayuchite. Rupa Goswami also sorted out the philosophical idea uh, in Nectar of Devotion. So uh, the Hari Bhakti Vilas was produced to satisfy those uh, smarter elements. And therefore, it must be read in that light. If you read Hari Bhakti Vilas, you will see uh, there's many things. For example, um, it talks about Diksha. When is there a good time for Diksha? Right? So uh, I'm paraphrasing, I, it's a, a long section, and it says there oh, Diksha should be always in the bright fortnight of the moon. And Diksha should never be performed at this time, but on this, these days. And Diksha should not be done this way, but Diksha should be done in this way and this way. And then at the end of all these rules and regulations that were satisfying to the Vaidhi Bhaktis, it says, but whenever the Guru decides, that's the correct time. <laughs> and so there's many things like that. There's description of the Guru. The Guru, uh, he should be healthy and he should have a nice glowing beard. And he should have good complexion and a good face. And he should be from a good family. And he should know the Shastra. And it gives all these qualifications of the Guru, this he should have. But if the Guru is a Paramahamsa, he's qualified. <laughs> so even if he comes from any family. If he's realized in Krishna, so 
Gopal, Vatasanat, Goswami, they lead people to this ultimate conclusion. And the ultimate conclusion of the Vedas, that is correct, that it is a matter of quality, not birth, not this, not that, but it is a, of time, but it is a matter of transcendental. Uh, so that has no reference to material uh, qualifications. Yes. So when he came to Brindavan, he was embraced by Lord Chaitanya and soaked in tears, drenched in tears. That's in the Bhakti Ratnika, one, uh, one, one, two, three to four. So, it's a shame we don't have more time. But I invite, uh, so Gopal Bhatta Goswami, one of the six Goswamis, of course, um, he wrote many books, actually. And he was particularly um, used by Lord Chaitanya. All the six Goswamis had different um, roles to establish his Mahaprabhu's movement. So he was particularly used for deity worship and Vaidhi. But we should never understand that therefore he is on a lower level or something. No, he is understood to be an expansion of Ananga Manjari and also Guna Manjari, one of the Asta Manjaris. And so he's uh, playing a certain role with his books and his books are drenched with the ultimate Vaishnav conclusions. So, his contributions, let me see if I can get the books, if there's a list. It's very interesting, all his uh, pastimes. Gopal's guru. Hmm. Yes, here's an interesting section. Through the power of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's merciful association, Venkat Bhatta, his brother Prabodhananda Saraswati, and his son Gopal Bhatta Goswami, and all the other members of his family were inspired to give up the worship of Lakshmi Narayan and become engaged in the exclusive devotional service of Radha and Krishna. And this is a particular aspect. We know the pastime with Govinda Dev the Ramanandis in Jaipur. Um, but uh, we take it, you all take it for granted that Lord Chaitanya is teaching or emphasizing Rag Marg in the middle of Kali Yuga. Uh, so this emphasis was not there in a general sense or propagated in a general sense before Mahaprabhu. Of course it was there, um, Madhavendra Puri, He's the guru of Ishwarapuru who initiated Lord Chaitanya. All these things uh, were there and have always been existent and manifest within the material universe. But by the grace of Lord Chaitanya, he has accumulated uh, the six Goswamis and in the midst of this terrible Kali Yuga, they are propagating the highest mellows of love of Godhead. And therefore, um, what is that sloka? Kali Kale Yuga Dharma. Kaleka Yuga Dharma. Oh no. It's a, yeah, it's an ocean of faults. What is that verse? Yes. Yeah. Kisna Shya Mukta Sangha Parame. The Kali Yuga is an ocean of faults. Huh? We just mentioned a few of them now. Never mind robbing banks. The bank, ro the banksters are the robbers. The people that own the banks, they're the biggest robbers. <laughs> but this Kali Yuga is an ocean of faults. But it is the greatest age. Huh? Why? Because you can take shelter of the six Goswamis who are expanding the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who giving intimate 
insight into the love of Godhead and giving access. Uh, so, there's only one reason to take birth in Kali Yuga, really, and that is to read the books of the Acharyas, chant Hare Krishna, and go back to Godhead. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, sorry if the class wasn't, uh, could have spoke more, but it's cold and everyone wants sir. <laughs> <laughs> Any qu quick questions while we're here? No? Okay. Thank you all very much. Srila Prabhupada, Sadhu Sangha, Gornitai, Radhisham Sunda, Krishna Balaram, King. Jai. Yeah. Yeah.